Hi, this is David Carrasso, David at Splunk.com. I'm going to be talking about the Field Extractor app, which is the next generation of IFX, the interactive field extractor that comes built in with Splunk. Just to show you what it is an improvement of, I'll just quickly show you IFX. Uh, you're in Splunk's interface, you're looking at an event, it's source type equals syslog, you click on an event and you say extract fields. That'll take you to the interactive field extractor, and over here, you'll see your sample events. You can click on a value you want to extract, and you copy and paste it, put it in as a sample value. You click Generate, and it'll generate a regex that uh, right here that extracts out this value, and you can click Save, Test, or Edit. Um, so that's the current state of what's in Splunk. What I'm going to show you is an app that I've written that's the next generation of that functionality. It's called Field Extractor. You can find it on Splunk Base, uh, or you can install it directly from the, the app. Um, it's here on Splunk Base, just to show you. Um, so let's go into the app. Click on Field Extractor. So here's the Field Extractor interface. You come in, uh, you, have, uh, you have to tie your regexes to a source, source type, or host. Um, it pre-populates uh, the values. In the IFX, you basically can only come at it from the point of view of looking at a given event and wanting to fix it by adding field values. Here, you go from the point of view of, I've got a source type syslog, and I want to go and uh, fix it. I want to work on the entire source type. Now, this syslog is not so interesting in the sense that uh, most of the fields are already extracted. Uh, I will, uh, I'll go over that in a second. So gray means that the fields are already extracted and you don't have to extract them. You can hover over a value and you can see it's, so that's machine name. Um, over here is the process, the, uh, this is the process ID. Um, let me go over the interface real quick. Uh, again, you selected source, source type, or host. You select the values. Now it generated this, this list by looking at uh, the default index, but if you click on more restrictions, you could specify what app you want to be working with within, what index you want to work uh, on, it'll show you all your indexes, and what fields you want to extract from. In the interactive field extractor, remember, uh, you can only work on the raw text of the event. Here, you can work on any uh, field value. So you can extract, for example, let's look at the source. From the name of the source, I could extract out a field called user ID. And what that'll do is that'll make a regex down here that says the user ID field is extracted as the second word uh, from the source. You can use this for uh, host uh, extraction based on the source, things like that. Let me undo that. Let's go back to raw, which is the more normal, uh, more common way to do it. Um, and if I set the restriction to be internal, uh, you'll see all our Splunk's internal logs. Now, these are already marked up, thank, uh, you know, thank God, because there's no reason for the user to have to do that. We've already gone and done the work and marked these up. This is get is the method, and this is the URI, URI path, and so on. Um, let's go back and work on the default index. And we're going to pick a source type uh, called, actually, let's not do syslog. Let's do something else. Uh, let's do postfix. So, because there are fewer fields extracted out. So, again, you see the gray ones are the ones already extracted. Uh, these, you can, you can tell, are written by some other uh, rule, some other f uh, extraction rule. And over here, 2 equals root, delay equals some other value. Those are automatically extracted by Splunk, and again, you don't have to extract those. Um, if in order to in, in in IFX you had to type in a value or copy and paste, here you just click on a value, and I say this is machine name. Hit enter, generates a rule. Um, you can the, one of the nice things about this version is that you can have it generate regexes that extract more than one field. So I can also say that's the month. And now it pulls out that, and if you look at the regex, it, pull, it generates a regex that pulls out the month and the machine name. Um, if you look at the events, 
uh, they're, uh, uh, they look relatively good, but basically you're looking at the latest events, which can often be very biased. Often you'll see many of the same types of events. And if you want to get a better feel for what your data really looks like, I have two new options. I have diverse and outliers. Um, this will clear the rules that it just ran. Um, outliers will look for small clusters, uh, events that don't look like other events. So these are, you'll just see a large, uh, diverse category of, of events that you wouldn't normally see, which is really nice for, and for uh, uh, validating the correctness of your rules. Diverse does the same sort of thing, except it's the more common clusters of uh, events. So you'll get like three copies of each type of event, um, but you'll, get them, you'll be covering the most common types of events that your data will have. And then latest, again, is just the, by time, the latest, which can often be misleading. Um, so let's click on liftoff, and we're going to say that's the machine name. Um, and we've got our, our regex that pulled it out. We got it here. Um, I can edit the regex. We've got this nice cheat sheet for what a regex is. And this is basically saying, look, skip to the third space, and then the machine name is after it until you get a space. Um, the uh, another nice thing is filtering. Um, so let's say you've got a lot of events and you want to filter. So I want to look at just the ones that have COVID in them. Um, now you've got just those events and you can focus on field extraction for those. Um, maybe a better example would be auth. Let's try that. Um, and what this did was it took the original 100 results and it just filtered them down to a subset. If you want to actually go and rerun a search looking for auth, you'll get more events. Um, you can see there are more now. Because um, it went out and searched for source type equals postfix syslog and auth. Um, and now you can write regexes that just apply to events that have auth. Um, let's see. Uh, you can select the maximum number of events to look at. Uh, you can highlight or not highlight the existing fields. Um, and uh, there's an option here to add whatever you filter on to the regex so that it, the regex will just apply to events that have auth in them explicitly. Also, if you have multi-line events that are longer than 15 lines, you can, you can add uh, and, and change the size of that. Uh, you can determine how many events the, the system learns on. So it's currently learning on 100 events. Even if you ask for 1,000 events, it'll still learn on 100 until you change that option. Um, let's see, what else? So let's go and uh, look at saving a rule. So let's go back, and we're going to call this machine name again. Um, we're going to hit OK. We've got our regex. Uh, that's interesting. It didn't learn that one. So let's let's do this again. Machine name. Interesting. Okay. So this is an example of a bug. Uh, you will get this occasionally. Uh, sometimes you want it to learn, uh, and it's not. Um, or sometimes these are often highlight problems. So if I turn off highlight existing fields, um, that might solve it. Let's click on lift off again, and let's do machine name. The highlighting code is kind of complicated. Um, interesting. I wonder what the reason is. Let's see. If we get rid of the filter. Okay, so it was there. I think it was just uh, some sort of highlighting problem. So they're there. Uh, it learned the rules. Um, and again, report any sort of problems like this. It learned the rules. Um, I can click test and I can see what sort of values uh, the regex extracted and you can see that it pulled out these machine names and they all look good their IP addresses or machine names and they all look good um, I can edit the regex as we've shown I can save it and here's where a couple of new features come in so the name of my regex should be a unique name it's basically the, the a list of all the fields that it's extracting I can call this anything I want um, the default is to extract at search time uh, which means that uh, you can change the regex at any time and your data will be, uh, your field extraction will be updated. Uh, by default, it saves it just public to you, or visible to you, um, but you can make it public to other users. Um, new to this version is you can now extract at index time, 
which means that your field value will be pulled out at index time and available. Uh, the good part about this is there are sometimes fields that you need to uh, search on quickly and extracting them out at index time can often help. But there are definite downsides, and there's a warning here that links to a, a warning. There's a link that goes to a warning about using it sparingly because once you make the regex and you start eating your data this way, um, you're, you really can't change the regex without re-indexing all your data. Um, and a new cool feature is called anonymize. So if I were to have clicked on a password and said anonymize this value, what it'll do is it'll replace the value with a bunch of hash marks. Um, so that w the data in the index is already anonymized, so it can block out passwords, IP addresses, uh, cookies, any sort of thing, you'd, social security numbers, anything you'd want. Um, and you can save the, uh, the regex. Please give comments. Um, when you do save a rule, let's just show this again. I save a rule, I'm going to do a standard thing, I'm going to click save. It's going to now show up as saved rules. So the nice thing about this interface, you can actually uh, edit existing rules. It'll show you the list of rules that uh, have extractions in the props.conf. It won't show you the complicated ones that use transforms.conf, but the basic ones it can, and you can edit these, which is nice. So you can, it's basically a manager for building new regexes as well as editing existing ones. Um, what else? I think we've covered it. And uh, thank you very much. And again, please give feedback. One other thing I wanted to uh, talk about was when we went into the IFX, we went in and said extract fields. But the Field Extractor app actually also adds a new workflow action called Extract Fields New. And if you click on that, that will take you to the Field Extractor app, but it'll pre populate it with the information from the event you selected. So I clicked on that event and it pre-populated source type equals syslog and it got me down to the events I was looking at around the same time. So that's the more traditional IFX way to get into the Field Extractor app if you ever want to. Okay.